In this video, we are moving forward with normalization and we will see how we can achieve the different normal forms based on the primary keys and the functional dependencies that we learned about before. In normalization, we are going to decompose our bad relations or tables where we have data redundancy or even we have data anomalies like update, insert, or delete anomalies. So we'll be breaking up their attributes and we'll be forming smaller relations to achieve the um, normal, different normal forms. So what we'll be using, we will be using the keys and the functional dependencies that we learned about before to certify or to check if this relation scheme is in a particular um, normal form. So let's review some definitions about keys since we are going to use these keys in our normalization process. If we have a relation R that has a set of attributes A1, A2, up to AN, a super key in that relation is actually a subset of that relation, so an attribute or more of that relation, where no two tuples have the same value for that subset. So if we say that this um, super key is only one attribute, A1, we cannot have two tuples, tuple 1 and tuple 2, have the same equal value of A1. If we have a subset, A1, A2 are my super key, tuple 1 and tuple 2 cannot have the combined subset, A1 and A2, equal for both of them. Now, a key is a super key, but we are adding an additional property to that super key, which is if we remove that um, if we remove any attribute from that key, this key will not be a super key anymore. So a key K is a super key, but removing any attribute from that key will cause that key to not be a super key anymore. Now, if we have more than one key in our relation, each one of these will be called a candidate key. We will select one of these candidate keys to be our primary key, and all the other keys in that relation will be called um, secondary keys. Now, a prime attribute is a member of one candidate key. So if we have this attribute as member of one of the candidate keys, we'll call that attribute a prime attribute. If this attribute is not part of any of the candidate keys, in that case, we'll call that a non-prime attribute. So now that we have reviewed these um, keys and functional dependencies, let's look at the actual normalization process and the different normal forms. The first normal form we will look at is called the first normal form, which is based on the attributes themselves. Then we will look at the second, third, and the voice code normal form, which are based on the keys and the functional dependencies of a relation schema. We also have the fourth normal form, which is also based on keys and multi-value dependencies, and the fifth normal form, which is based on keys and the joint um, dependencies. Now, as a designer, you do not need to go to the highest possible normal form. Sometimes we leave our relations in a lower um, normal form to improve the performance of our database. So we usually, in the industry, we try to keep our databases up to the voice code normal form or the third normal form to improve the performance of our database. So let's start with the first normal form. The first normal form will not allow you to have attributes with multi-values. It will not allow you to have composite attributes and it will not allow you to have nested relations where attributes um, for individual tuples are non-atomic. So this is actually considered to be part of the definition of a relation. Most relational database management systems will not allow you to um, create relations that are not in the first normal form. So only relations that are in the first normal form are allowed to be defined in most RDBMS. So again, if your relation does not have composite attributes, it does not have multi-valued attributes, and you do not have um, nested relations, that means this relation or table is considered in the first normal form. So let's look at an example. Let's say we have this department table. We have the department name, the department number, the department manager, social security number, and the department location. Now, if you look at the data that is in the department, so if we look at an instance of the relation department, so we'll see that we have the re research department in the locations we have multi-values. So for the research department, we have three different locations, and this is considered a multi-valued attribute. 
So what we need to do to make it in the first normal form, we need to decompose this multi-valued attribute into three different um, tuples. So the research has now three tuples. Each tuple will have a single atomic value in the department location. And now this relation is considered in the first normal form. Now we still have problems with data redundancy, but this is the first step of normalization, which is making sure that all our tuple values are atomic. We do not have multi-valued attributes in our um, attributes. Now let's look at another example uh, where we have a nested relation. So for example, here I have the employee project table. We have the social security number, the employee name, the project number, and the hours. Notice these are considered as a project. So if we look at the instance of that um, relation, you will notice that the project number has multi-values and these multi-values are corresponding to multi-values um, in the hours um, attributes. So project number one has 32.5 hours, project number two has 7.5 hours for the same employee. So since we have multi-values in here for these two attributes, we consider this as a nested relation and we can break it down to another relation outside this um, employee project. So we are breaking down this big relation into two sub-relations. So the first one is the employee project one, where the social security number and the employee name are in that relation. And then employee project two, where we have the social security number, the project number, and the hours. And that will mean that we do not, we will not have any um, multi-valued attributes in that relation or resulting relations. And that will make this or these relations in the first normal form. Now, once we have this first normal form, once we have our tables and relations in the first normal form, we can move forward to the second normal form. We will be using the um, concepts of the functional dependencies and the primary keys. So let's look at the prime attribute. A prime attribute is a member of the primary key. A full functional dependency is a functional dependency where if y determines z, if we remove any attribute from y, that means the functional dependency does not hold anymore. So if we look at some examples, if we have the social security number and the project number determine the hours, we consider this a full functional dependency because the social security number on its own does not determine the hours. The project number on its own does not determine the hours. So social security number and the project number, they are considered um, determining the hours. This is considered a full functional dependency. Now, if we look at the social security number with a project number, they determine the employee name, but this is not a full functional dependency. We call it a partial dependency because the social security number on its own can determine the employee name. So a full functional dependency, if we remove any attribute from the set, the, full, the functional dependency does not hold anymore. For the partial functional dependency, one attribute can um, determine the other attribute on its own, and this is what we call a partial uh, dependency. So when do we consider our relation in the second normal form? If all my non-prime attributes are fully functionally dependent on the primary key, in that case, we consider this relation in the second normal form. If one of my non-prime attributes is partial, has partial functional dependency on the primary key, so one part of the primary key determines that non-prime attribute, in that case, we will need to take that um, part of the primary key with the non-prime attribute and create a new relation where this new relation will be in the second um, normal form. And this is what we call the second normalization, where we decom decompose our relation into another relations or more relations where each one of these new relations, all the non-prime attributes are fully functionally dependent on the primary key. So let's look at an example here. This is my employee project table. I have the social security number and the project number. This is my composite primary key. I have the hours, the employee name, the project name, and the project location. Now this primary key, this primary key, the social security number and the project number determine the, or determines the hours. So the hours is fully functionally dependent on this primary key. Now for the employee name, the employee name does not fully um, 
functionally depends on the primary key, the employee name has partial dependency because the social security number on its own will determine the employee name. So this is my second functional dependency and it's a partial dependency, it's not fully a full functional dependency because part of my primary key on its own can determine the employee name. Now, if we look at the project name and the project location, they also have a partial functional dependency. The social security number and the project number determine these project name and project location. However, if we look at the project number on its own, it will be able to determine the project name and the project location. So the third functional dependency here is also a, a partial functional dependency. So to make this relation in the second normal form, we will take these partial dependencies and create new tables and relations for them. So this full functional dependency, we will leave it. We'll create a new table for the partial functional dependency, the social security number determining the employee name. So this is my second um, relation. And then the project number on its own is going to determine the project name and the project location. So this will also be another relation where the project number will determine the project name and the project location. So we have now three new relations or three relations instead of one. And each one of this, these relations, the functional dependency is a full functional dependency. So all my non-prime attributes are fully functionally dependent on the primary key. So the hours is dependent on the social security and the project number together. We cannot determine the hours by only looking at the project number or by only looking at the social security number. The employee name is fully functionally dependent on the social security number. The project name and the project location, they are both fully functionally dependent on the project number. Now that we have our relations in the second normal form, we can move in to the um, third normal form. The third normal form depends on something called the transitive functional dependency. If you have X determining Z, and that came from X determining Y and Y determining Z, that's considered to be a transitive functional dependency. So we got X determining Z by getting X determining Y and Y determining um, Z. So if your de functional dependency is derived from two functional dependencies, this is considered a transitive functional dependency. So for example, if my social security num uh, number is determining the department um, manager social security, this is coming from the social security number determining the department number and the department number is determining the department manager um, social security number, this will be considered a transitive functional dependency. On the other hand, the social security number determining the employee name is non-transitive because there is no attribute between them. So there is no attribute X where the social security number is determining X and X is determining the employee name. So this is considered a non-transitive um, dependency, functional dependency. So when do we consider a relation to be in the third normal form? We will consider a relation in the third normal form if we do not have a transitive um, dependency in our relation. So if a non-prime attribute in the relation is not transitively dependent on the primary key, this means that we are in the third normal form. So if we are not in the third normal form, we can decompose our relations. So any transitive dependency will create a new relation for that and that will bring us back to the third normal form in our relations. Now it's important to note if your um, transitive dependency, your attribute Y in the transitive dependency in here is a primary or a candidate key, we will not have a problem. So if we have X determining Y and Y determining Z, if Y is a candidate key, we do not have a problem. Only the only problem is if Y is not a candidate key, in that case we will need to um, break up that relation into more relations to achieve the third normal form. So when Y is a candidate key, there is no problem with the transitive dependency. So for example, the employee table, social security number, employee number, and salary. The social security number is determining the employee number, and the employee number is determining the salary. Since the employee number is a candidate key, we do not have a problem with this transitive um, dependency or transitive functional dependency. So let's look at an example here. This is the employee department table. I have the employee name, social security number, birth date, address, department number, department name, and department 
uh, manager social security number. Now, a transitive dependency here, the social security number is determining the department number, and the department number is determining the department name and the department manager social security number. So we have a transitive relationship or transitive functional dependency, and the department number is not a candidate key. We cannot determine the address or the birth date or the employee name using the department number. So we have a transitive dependency. This attribute, the transitive attribute is not a candidate key. So in this case, we will take that attribute with the um, other attributes, the non-primary or the non-prime attributes that depends on that transitive attribute into a new relation. So we will keep the department number in this main relation. So employee name, social security number, birth date, address, and department number. But then we'll also take the other attributes that depend on the department number in another relation. And the department number now will be a primary key in that relation. And since it's determining the department name and the department manager social security number with no transitive dependencies, that means this relation is also in the third normal form. So let's recap and redefine these normal forms informally. Uh, a relation is considered in the first normal form if all my attributes depend on the key. We do not have multi-valued attributes or composite attributes or nested relations. And a relation is in the second normal form if all the attributes depend on the whole key, not parts of the key, the whole key together. This will be in uh, the second normal form. And the third normal form if my attributes depend on nothing but the key. So we do not have transitive dependencies. They only depend on the key, not other attribute in our relation or not another um, non-candidate key in our relation.